Live from the WKMG Problem Solvers, this is Local 6 News at 6. The whole train has derailed, and I see at least 10 cars that are, that are toppled like, like Tinker Toys. Frightened Amtrak passengers make frantic calls for help after their train tumbles off the tracks. Tonight, the chaos and confusion in their own words. And good evening to you. I'm Bob Fryer. And I'm Lauren Perkins. Tonight, new information into dead, yesterday's deadly Amtrak train crash as passengers begin another long journey home. Right now, federal investigators are sorting through twisted train tracks, overturned rail cars, digging for clues in the derailment. Now, here's what we know at this hour. 452 people were on board the Virginia-bound train. Four people were killed and more than 150 were injured. Tonight, we also know the train engineer hit the emergency brakes when he apparently saw a misalignment with the tracks. The NTSB says the tracks had been installed recently. The Amtrak auto train was not speeding. Four other trains had passed over them yesterday before the deadly Amtrak crash. The NTSB says the trains they have inspected have turned out okay. No defaults or no faults there. As the Amtrak train began to slip and slide, dozens of people on board picked up cell phones and frantically called for help. And new tonight, we hear those 911 calls. Tarek Miner tracked them down. He's live in Putnam County. Tarek? When the Amtrak train finally came to rest on the tracks here in Crescent City, the first instinct of the passengers trapped inside was to make that call for help. From inside these crumpled passenger compartments come the very first calls for help. I'm in one car and I see at least 10 cars that are that are toppled like, like Tinker Toys. Okay, honey. In the car I was in, there was a man with his head split open, a, a woman with a broken arm. There's a couple of elderly people who are pinned under the seat and that's what you have in car. We have entrapment. Confirmed. The whole train has derailed. We, had, we understand, but can you see around you how many people may be injured? I have no idea. The whole train is on its side. Okay. How many people were on this train? 400 on coach alone. 400 and all 400 were in these overturned vehicles? I, I managed to climb out. I'm the youngest person in my car. Okay, so my husband. And kids, we got out and we're on the street and a gentleman just pulled up. Frantically describing the hundreds that are injured and the passengers feared dead. It went this way, this way, and then it went over and it tipped over. This Rhode Island family literally pulled from each other's arms as the cars buckle and break apart. As the car's going over, you can see like the other train thing detached from it and he was near the door. We, we went through a, a tree and I, we thought a car pinned in the middle. Okay. We've, got, we've got two, a car completely on its side, pinned in between two other cars. We weren't able to gather all the 911 calls made from inside the train because the NTSB is reviewing phone calls from crew members in hopes of getting more insight into the cause of this crash. In Crescent City, I'm Tarek Miner, Local 6. So let's move on to the investigation now. Hour by hour, federal investigators are learning more about what might have caused this deadly crash. They're sorting through that wreckage. And just in the last hour, the NTSB has given out new information. Tony Pipitone's following their search. Tony? While everything is under investigation, questions are focusing on two things. The engineer who thought he saw something on these tracks and the tracks themselves, which are owned and operated by CSX Transportation. That's a company that's been under federal scrutiny before because it has done a poor job of maintaining and repairing the tracks. Investigators for the NTSB, CSX Transportation, and Amtrak take to the tracks this morning. Tracks where the auto train's engineer reported seeing a misalignment before slamming on his brakes too late to avoid this. Now the repair and maintenance performance of the track's owner, CSX Transportation, is once again under federal scrutiny. It was only two years ago that a federal audit found CSX using too few inspectors, failing to properly maintain tracks, and failing to report defects when they found them. The tracks were so bad, the feds warned, the public remains at risk for future problems. Yesterday, a big problem. 12 of 14 passenger cars derailed, killing four. A key question, why did the auto train derail, crossing the same tracks a coal train had just passed 12 minutes earlier? The southbound coal train that we discussed earlier, which passed about 6 or uh, 445, uh, has been inspected, the completion uh, in Sanford, uh, and no, no problems were detected with that train. CSX, as an inspector, saw no problems here at 9 yesterday morning, 
and again at 245. And they say the problem in the 2000 audit has been addressed with hundreds of millions spent on track replacement, repair, and inspection. Four feet, eight and a half inches. That's the magic number. The distance inspectors look for between the two sides of the track. Anything much more than that or less than that, and problems can arise. But that's only one thing inspectors are looking for. They inspect cross ties, looking for rotting, and count spikes to make sure they hold the rail plates down. And then the rails themselves, checked with ultrasound to reveal any internal weaknesses. But that wasn't enough to prevent this derailment on CSX tracks in Maitland in November. That rail had just been inspected too. A CSX spokeswoman says that repair and replacement of tracks has been the top capital expenditure priority since that audit came out in the year 2000, and that accidents on those tracks have been down 20% each year since then. But it just takes one, like this one, to take four lives, and I can tell you now, among the dead, two men ages 67 and 75, and two women, one of them, we don't know the age, the other is the wife of one of the men who also died. Reporting live from South Putnam County, Tony Pipitone, Local 6. Tony, quickly, I referred to it earlier in the newscast. They said they have looked at both of those trains, the one who went south and the one that went north, and they said they didn't see anything wrong with the wheels, right? Nothing wrong with the wheel and nothing on the undercarriage to suggest that it might have gone across a rail that was somehow cockeyed, out of alignment. So, again, a lot of questions here. One of the things they're looking at is heat and whether heat could have played a role in this because the hotter it is, the easier the metal bends. All right, but not a heat advisory for yesterday, 81 degrees, so that's still kind of up in the air. There was no order. There was no order to go slow yesterday. All right, thank you, Tony. They were shaken up but not severely injured. Hundreds of survivors left hospitals last night, bound for Orlando hotels, and tonight they're trying to figure out how they're going to get home. Sean Killinger is with these passengers live in Orlando. Sean? Bob, home sweet home has never sounded sweeter to these people. Let me just tell you, we can tell you some of them have been flown home by Amtrak at their expense. Problem is they just can't tell us how many. Others still shuttled out over the past hours to Sanford where finally 130 cars from that wreck have been towed in. Those passengers reunited with their cars. But still, all that being said, about 200 people will still be going to bed tonight in about six area hotels, including this one that we're at the Sleep Inn, really making the best of the worst. We sat down, we had gotten our salads, opened our bread, and then we started shaking back and forth, and then the car just slipped onto its side. Ten-year-old Chris from New York spent the day visiting his dad in the hospital. He was in the dining car on Amtrak number 52. I was just really scared that they wouldn't make it. John Kamedlin is a snowbird from New Jersey. He was taking his new car back up north. Did you get any sleep last night? Uh, not really. I got to bed about 3.30. I don't know if thinking about what happened. So that, and your first thought this morning when you woke up? That I woke up. <laughs> that I was still here. And Jackie Underwood was on her way to Baltimore to see her dad. He's in the ICU there. She says first the train shook. And another young gentleman who was standing, bracing himself, and it was like an awful fun house. They've all become fast friends in these hard times, waiting to get their cars back, heading to Walmart for free supplies provided by Amtrak and thanking their lucky stars that they're all alive. Boy, they sure are, Bob. And inside right now, Amtrak providing dinner to the passengers inside the sleep-in. Red Cross counselors on hand. So obviously a lot still unfolding here. And as it does unfold, we'll bring it to you guys at 11. Right now, live in Orlando, Sean Killinger, Local 6. Sean, thank you much. As the gentleman was mentioning in Sean's package, bringing his new car up to there to New Jersey, that Amtrak train was, that crash was an auto train. It was ca carrying nearly 200 vehicles. Most of those rail cars did not derail. This afternoon, those cars were loaded back onto the track. They headed south towards Sanford so car owners could pick up the vehicles if they decide they're going to drive up north. Candace Coleman was at the station when the cars arrived. She is live there with the latest. Candace. And Bob and Lauren, right around 12.30, the cars arrived. All these cars behind me, 153 to be exact. And folks started picking them up right around 3 o'clock. And in talking to them, I think a lot of them were surprised to see they were in really remarkably good condition. And while the retrieval process was simple enough, show your ticket or ID, not everyone got their car back this afternoon. For the Nielsen family, this is the end. And this is the beginning of a very long journey back home to Vermont. Oh, they be back like that other one is. They got my car back here in one piece, and 
we're all walking in one piece, so thank God for that. From the time they arrived at the station to the time they got their car, about 15 minutes. The good news, there wasn't any damage to their car. We have insurance adjusters. If it, um, they deem appropriate that the car can be driven and the folks want to go home, they can go home at this point. So. Are you emotionally ready to drive back? Got to be. Got to open the shop on Monday morning. He's a pet therapy dog. The Hardens weren't so lucky today. The deal in the car is that uh, uh, it's out still in one of the remaining uh, carrier uh, cars. And According to Amtrak officials, out of 202 cars, approximately 50 still remain at the scene. Unfortunately, they're not sure when they'll be able to return them to their rightful owners. I'm definitely not ready to ever go back on a train. We, we sort of had it on trains. Yep. It's it was a, so scary. And Amtrak officials say they'll be here into the night connecting passengers to their cars. Can't get here tonight, no problem. Your car will be protected. Don't want to drive your car home, once again, no problem. Amtrak will pay for the shipping costs. And one more thing, there will be no train traffic in or out of Sanford for the next few days. If you have a uh, ticket, you're being asked to go to the Orlando Amtrak station. You'll be put on a bus to Jacksonville. Well, they'll reroute you to your final destination. And that's the latest in Sanford. Candace Coleman, Local 6. All right, Candace, thanks for that information. Many family and friends still want to check on those trips.